Basically, this morning it was just setting out so we know where our tiles are coming because you don't want any slivers at the top or the bottom. So the next step is obviously get it all tiled and then we can go on to the grouting and the fitting after that. You should always put two spreads on, so either you put a, a notch spread on the wall and then you'll back butt the tile, or you'll generally put a notch spread on your tile back butt of the wall. So I do the latter version, so I obviously put a, a spread on the wall and a spread on the tile. Basically because of the plasterboard will suck it in at a different rate to your tile, that already fixes to that. And you know it is solid. You'll see the issue arise on floor sometimes where the people have obviously just put a tile straight down without back butting the tile or back butting the floor and it will just delaminate and pop, pop straight up. Obviously you, you can take a floor up and it'd be brand new and pull it back down again properly. So obviously there's a difference with plumb and level. So obviously with this it's millimetres is, is a lot in tiling. If you're 0.5 mil out, by the time you get to over here, you're going to be two to three mil out and then obviously further and further as you go around. So if you're meeting in the final corner, you will be like six, seven mil out in the end, which is a lot in the, the tiling world. So it's got, it's got to be as bang on as you can get it, really. Once you've already got all the tiles on the wall, unless you've got a couple of lads in there tiling dead quick and you're using like a slow set, you can probably jiggle stuff. I generally tend to work on my own, so every time you, you round to here, that wall's set, completely set up. It all depends on the room, so obviously this one, we've got a door in the corner, but you will still see a grout line in the top corner up here. So you have got to make sure it, once it's come round, it is all going to wrap around perfectly. The actual products before, not these ones themselves, but I've used similar ones. The good quality, the hard tiles, so they are very hard, so obviously you've got to use the correct bits to be cutting through them. But in general, they're, they're not a bad quality tile at all. So I'd never say go for fully polished or anything like that. Some people have had fully polished, depending if you've got kids and stuff, it is very slippy. So I will not recommend polished ever on the floor, I'd recommend either like a semi-polished or a matte tile in general, um, but also always porcelain. I'd never put a ceramic on the floor. They're just not made for them, so they're not as strong, so they do break as e easier compared to porcelain tile. And to be honest, you, you rarely get bathrooms in ceramics now. You still get them, obviously, but the majority of bathrooms I do are in porcelain all around, and there is specific tiles for wall and floors, and so I so say yeah, I've got to check what you what you're buying just to make sure it can be on a wall, for instance. Because some tiles are, are floor only. So tiles can range, it depends what you want, what finish you want, what size you want. You can get tiles from £20 a square metre up to £90 a square metre. It's all down to the customer when it comes to that. Bathrooms can vary in cost depending on what you want to go for. Some people want the low end, which is like basic, you know, just white, basic. Not the best name stuff at all. Your average probably five to seven K. Or you can go to mid range where you're talking eight to 10 K. Uh, the high end, you're roughly looking about 10 to 13 K for a bit more higher end. Or you can go for the expensive space products, which is obviously you're looking at 15 plus. And yeah, you can slap a bathroom up dead quick if you really want to. It'll still be tiled at the end of the day. They probably ain't stuck on well. They're not going to last forever. There's a lot, a lot of stuff to quick tiling to make it look nice and like a proper bathroom and you know everything lines up especially when you got stuff like this it's not just a case of being a mill out or two mill out there you've got precise to make sure these all line up you've got lines on everything on my own i'll always say four or five days for a bathroom to be properly tiled depending on size so the last one a bit bigger than this but they had bigger tiles so it depends on tiles as well so if you've got a little tiny subway bricks you're talking a lot longer because obviously it's it's a lot more time consuming because it's got to be so flat and so smooth for a Victorian Edwardian floors you would never really put it on a wall I would try to get out and doing it onto a wall then the problem is the porous tiles because they've got to be sealed and everything obviously these no water's getting through these but on a wall especially because the problem is you do a border you put the little triangles in you put the squares in and I probably wouldn't want to do it even if I was getting paid very well for it to be honest the floors in general are incredibly tedious on their own, never mind doing them onto a floor. The cost of them is absolutely astronomical. There's a lot of different patterns out there. Normally, if you're doing like a period floor, they'll put like a um, crackle glazed green bottle, like I call them bottle green tiles. They'll put them and they go well with them because they look, look about the same period. Just depends on what 
people people want really. So all the tiling is finished now, provided by Marquis Tilings. They are a nice finish to be honest, They've got a beautiful pattern in them, just a little bit of a ribbed effect. Obviously we've got them going all around this way, we've got the flat on the top, but they're in the soft grey finish, finished with grey grout, and to be honest it, it does make the bathroom quite nice.